Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of Dell World 2012. We're down here in Austin, the great, the great city of Austin. The fantastic mojo here. Dell World, about 5,000 customers and partners here at Dell World, and theCUBE is covering it end to end live. I'm here with my co-host. I'm Jeff Kelly, also with Wikibon.org. Thanks uh, for having me on, Dave, I appreciate it. Uh, we're here with Scott Hollis, who will be our next guest, Director of Product Marketing uh, for Performance Monitoring uh, Business at Quest Software, welcome. Thank you, thanks good to be here. Thanks for coming on Inside the Cube. Um, so Quest Software, recent acquisition, uh, about $860 million acquisition by uh, Dell, I think back in September. That's right. Uh, so this is your first Dell World uh, uh, as a member of the Dell, the Dell team. Um, how are you liking the show? And tell us a little bit about uh, kind of uh, you know, your role inside of Quest and now inside of Dell. Enjoying the show, making a lot of good contacts because we were, we were only acquired a few months ago. Mm -hmm. However, the integration's been proceeding um, incredibly well. We're forming a separate group, software group mm -hmm. called the Dell Software Group. And that really has three businesses within it, systems management, business intelligence, and security. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, going to be within the Dell Software Group, and we've already been talking about that here today. John Swainson and his, his um, uh, presentation uh, discussed that already. And we're actually, as far as the business that I'm in, mm -hmm. is uh, the, the application performance monitoring business. Mm -hmm. And so I have product marketing for, for all of the performance monitoring, which includes the database performance monitoring, uh, virtualization performance monitoring, network performance monitoring, and application performance mm -hmm. monitoring. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think um, application performance monitoring is a large draw because it's all about the applications today. It's, it's whether it's in the data center, in the cloud, private, public, it, it, it doesn't matter. What really matters is, is the service that the application is intended to deliver being delivered to the end user? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's where uh, we're focused. But, mm -hmm. but the family of products that we have allows us to do that from the end user's perspective and to show organizations what that end user interaction, maybe it's an online revenue site, maybe it's a customer service app that the customer service team needs real time when they're on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, but not only do we show that front end of the user experience with the application, and then the transaction tracing through the application, we allow, we provide the depth on the network on the database, on the virtual infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So when there is that problem, our customers are able to quickly identify where in the stack, in the technology stack it's occurring. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's really the key difference between application performance monitoring and more traditional performance monitoring that was really focused on the components themselves mm -hmm. I see. rather than the, the whole. Mm -hmm. So how does remediation occur in this model? Uh, can you talk about that a little bit in terms of uh, how, how automated it can yeah. be? Yeah, sure. There's with APM and without APM. Without APM, <laughs> uh, what happens is each of the functional silos has their own monitoring tool. When a problem occurs, there's a war room call set up and each of the, the experts for that representing that functional team, functional teams being the network, the database, the virtual, um, they, they get on this call and they all say, it's not me. DEFCON 6, let's get in, right? Yeah, okay. and it's not me, the network is great. Fingers and exactly, and there, this could go on for hours, for days, for weeks. And so CIOs and, and VPs of IT ops have just said, I've had it. I need a way that ties everything together, but there's, there's some uh, more traditional, well-known uh, software vendors that provide a huge monolithic platform that could take years to fully implement. What we've done is we've leveraged um, a very fast time to value solution that ties everything together in a modular way and it's collaborative so that each of the, the distinct owners in the, of the pillars are able to see the same thing. And then the person that owns the application that's responsible to the business is able to uh, quickly re identify where the problem is and then go get right at the root cause because ultimately they're accountable to the business. There's service levels that have to be met for the business. So when you say it's collaborative, you have, you have tools for them to collaborate? Is that part of the? Yeah, the instead of being distinct tools that they're each looking at, and each of them getting a different view, there's one truth. 
and that one truth is in the APM solution in, in, in our fog lights. So, so give us a sense of like how you do it. Like what's the secret sauce? I mean, you've got all this data and metadata locked within these silos. Uh -huh. so, so you need to get access to that information in order to solve your, the problem. Is, uh -huh. that, is that right? So, That's right. So how do you do that and how do you unify that view? Well, it really has to do with each of the functional components can be installed, whether it's for, like let's say for the database administrator. The database administrator might have another tool they're using, but they will install our component there as well to gather that data. So each of the, each of the components gets installed and it feeds into a central management server. And from that, the user interface interacts with that management server. But what's really, what's really different about what, what Foglight brings to the table is the end user's experience. We actually record what the end user's doing on the screen and we can play that back. We also provide synthetic transactions. So from that user's, not only that real user, but synthetic transactions from different points of presence so that the organization can know what the performance is of that application okay, so around you're, the world. You're not measuring the, 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 the light on the server, or the server level, but you're measuring application performance as the user would see it? We're doing both, okay. but the difference is we start from how the, where the user sees the performance, mm -hmm. what the user's real experience is. And then we have a synthetic ability to actually script and play back transactions so even when there may or may not be end users, there, there's the synthetic, synthetic is always checking availability. But when there is a problem, we also provide, which is different than most APM solutions, we provide the depth in the functional pillars, meaning the network monitoring, the database monitoring, the virtual, and these are best of breed solutions that we have. So we can actually drill down to find root cause. Okay, so once you find root cause, Take us through what happens next. Well, there's, um, in order to, you, you want to reduce, once you find the re root cause, there's a mean time to resolution. We call it MTTR, mean time to resolution, that you want to minimize. That's what the VP of IT Ops wants, that's what the CIO wants, the business exec wants. So once you can quickly identify where it's occurring, now potentially we don't provide the depth maybe at, down at the record level in the database that is needed, I know we do, but Potentially, if that isn't there, then other tools would play into the, mm -hmm. the picture in, in, in resolving the problem, getting at the data to resolve the problem. But we have um, a major auto manufacturer who um, had an accelerator sticking problem and, and they had uh, all, the, all the customers wanting to get at you know, the, the repair and then all of their um, uh, dealerships needing to get parts as well and they were having one problem after another had 37 different monitoring solutions. It was a very broad, expansive environment, a very difficult time resolving the issue. They brought in fog light, leverage fog light, and, and to this day forward, they've not had any of those issues. And Jeff, I know you want to get into the analytics side of things, because ultimately we're trying to figure out, okay, can you use predictive analytics to solve these problems? So why don't you, you know, pick up on that? Right, sector. exactly. I mean, so you know, when we're talking about uh, performance uh, monitoring of an application. I mean, it's critical not just to find, you know, when there's a, when there's a problem, right. but also to kind of predict and yes. prevent that from happening ahead of time. And of course, that takes a lot of analytics and uh, under the covers. So, yeah. what do you, how do you play in that space? What is your approach to that? And uh, you know, really, how, can you kind of articulate the value you think that, that provides to um, uh, your community of uh, customers and users? Trending, trending data over time is something that all of our customers want. We provide mm -hmm. that, there's extensive reporting. But what the customers really want is more, not, they love predictive, but more times than not, the predictive solutions that are out there are have false positives mm -hmm. enough, but if they can look and see utilization trends over time, and then get recommendations on ways they mm -hmm. might correct those, um, that especially exists in our, our virtualization monitoring components. There's um, really, really powerful capacity planning. We've got chargeback capabilities, so, depending on who's util utilizing the infrastructure, there's mm -hmm. ability to charge appropriately. And then of course the performance monitoring, which is key, mm -hmm. but like, like you were asking, the analytics around trends, and really we, we look at it in three ways. There's advice, there's analysis, and there's automation. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to monitor and provide some advice. Right. And that's like the first step of any solution out mm -hmm. there would do. The analysis and providing the analytics and providing some recommendations on what should be done or when when capacity might be exceeded if certain changes are not made, that's pretty powerful. Even more powerful is the automation of either making those changes dynamically 
for mm -hmm. uh, you know allowing the self service that that we know is so popular in in, in supporting cloud environments and and the automation is really the key mm -hmm. it's the nirvana that everyone is going for right so so the quest allow uh, provide all three distinct uh, capabilities in a, in a really yeah. unified manner as you were as you were telling uh, talking to Dave about yeah absolutely we do mm -hmm. so we provide the 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 advice the analysis and the automation mm -hmm. and that's a big differentiator for us versus mm -hmm. the other the other products that are out there mm -hmm. so you know we've heard a lot about conversion infrastructure uh, mm -hmm. and private uh, private clouds uh, at this show uh, Dave and uh, John have been talking a lot about it uh, with many guests, so how does uh, you know virtualized environments, and specifically as as Dell really makes this push into uh, the private cloud business, and really uh, trying to take their customers on that journey to to the private cloud, how does uh, Quest's job become more difficult, or or what are the new what are the challenges associated with those kind of environments versus a more traditional architecture um, that you might see you know that is common today, but is increasingly moving to this kind of cloud like model. Well, the, the private cloud environments lever leverage virtualization heavily, mm -hmm. and so and the automation layer on top of that is critical, and monitoring all the different components that make up a transaction, because in a highly in a in a private cloud environment, and in a virtualized environment, workloads move mm -hmm. dynamically, and when they move, the different components that make up an application or a service that's being delivered to the end user, you might not think that by moving application A onto, onto host B, might, it looks like that would be not a problem, but then there's application C that's sharing resource there, mm -hmm. and you may not have realized that you're indirectly impacting application C, so it gets really complicated really fast, so our solutions simplify all of that and allow these organizations to adopt and, and thrive mm -hmm. in a private cloud environment. And here recently, we, um, we announced our fog light for Windows Azure applications. So if um, organizations are choosing to use um, uh, platform as a service, like Windows Azure, we, we have support for that as well. And we do that different than other vendors. Our customers want to know what the end user's experience is with that application. And yes, they, they also want to know how, how the application is performing and the different components that make up the application. They want both. But most of the other solutions out there focus really on how the components are performing, mm -hmm. and they don't tie it together with the end user experience, mm -hmm. which is what we're known for. Really, so, so the idea being, certainly you want your underlying infrastructure to be operating efficiently, but the most important thing is that the, the user, the application user is, is enjoying a, a, a solid experience even if at times perhaps the infrastructure is not operating as efficiently as possible. It's important, but yeah. but they're two kind of separate, though tied together uh, uh, concepts, really. They, they are, and it's interesting, there's two perspectives of it. Uh, one, of our, one of our customers um, has 10,000 florists that they support, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they have the infrastructure for fulfillment, and the point of sale systems, and everything. And so real time on, on Mother's Day, which is the big day, um, they were actually uh, using fog light <coughs> as in a, in a trial capacity to see how uh, you know what it could provide for them, and they were noticing they were they were the revenue was down a little bit all of a sudden, and they couldn't figure out why. With fog light, they could actually play back and see that in the shopping cart when you went to purchase that there was a promotion code, mm -hmm. and when they entered the promotion code, it failed. The app failed. And so they were getting abandoned shopping carts, people going, you know, trying another. Mm -hmm. So they quickly found that and they were just in awe that, that we can do that. But then something else was interesting. I went to visit them and they told me that, okay, we have 26 web servers and, you know, something else I love about your product is I got a call from the boss and he says, okay, one of the web servers is at 95% CPU. I need you to drop everything and, and, and go, fi go uh, figure out what's going on. And he says, well, wait a second. So he pulled up the fog light UI and he looked at what the end users were experiencing and the transaction flow. And he says, but everything's, I'm even better than normal. All of 100% are doing great. And so he called back up and he said, you know, I realize there's a problem with one of the web servers, but the other 25 are handling just fine and it's not a busy time of year. N none of our, we're not impacted revenue. None of our user experience is impacted in any way. He said, how about I work on that tomorrow and finish this key project that you wanted me to finish today? He said, great, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. So it allows you to prioritize activities and be more proactive in supporting the business mm -hmm. instead of just being reactive. Interesting. 
Um, and so, kind of, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, Windows Azure, and and for uh -huh. instance, that kind of got me thinking about the the big data space there. Windows, uh, Microsoft is is working with Hortonworks on their Hadoop platform and making uh -huh. that available uh, from the cloud. Uh, you know, it's very early days for big data applications. That is, applications built on some of these NoSQL databases. But uh, how do you see that potentially impacting kind of what you do from an application performance and uh, monitoring and management uh, landscape? Well, the more data there is, obviously, the more that application transactions are occurring and the more uh, workloads there are, it's synonymous. One goes with the other in most cases. And so the applications themselves rely on the databases and the file, file uh, systems to be responsive. And obviously, if there's a, if there's a hiccup in the delivery of the, the service to the end user, you want to know where that is. And if that has to do with access or processing of the data, mm -hmm. then you want to know that right away. And so with APM, w actually, with APM in its pure state, it, it, it weighs the way some of the, um, one, one analyst in particular is viewing it, is that um, it's really just the end user's experience with the application and the, and the application processing itself. In reality, a APM is, is making sure that that application and that service is being delivered to the end user. And so you have to be able to identify and have some depth in the, the, the key components in the converged mm -hmm. infrastructure, mm -hmm. which includes the network, the database, the, the processing infrastructure, the applications, the web servers, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. um, the virtual infrastructure, whether it's virtual or physical. All of that you have to have visibility into. And I mentioned earlier that we were, um, we provided a modular solution. Yep. A lot of our customers will start with the application layer and the end user, or they'll start with the database performance, or they'll start with the virtual mm -hmm. performance monitoring and then they'll, they'll expand from there. Because it's all integrated, but it doesn't require a rip and replace. You can, right. you can start where your current point of pain is, and over time, uh, move out some tools and consolidate mm -hmm. so that there's one UI and one truth, and mm -hmm. those, we call it, uh, the war room calls I mentioned earlier, we call it blame storming. You can eliminate the blame storming when you mm -hmm. have a single view of the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm sure the uh, internal teams appreciate that, and uh, uh, get people get along a little bit better when yeah. uh, that you eliminate that. So. All right, listen, guys, we got to we got to go. We got uh, okay. we're up. The, the planes are backing up, as they say. But uh, Scott, thanks very much for okay. coming on the cube. Sure, appreciate it's your great to be here. Thank you, Jeff. Enjoyed for it. In. Thanks so right, much. Keep it right there, Thank everybody. You. This is Dave Vellante, and we're here live from Dell World in Austin, Texas, 2012. This is the Cube SiliconANGLE's coverage. We'll be right back after this word. <laughs>